What's up, folks? I'm Odd, by the way. Uh, you saw the title of the video. You probably know why you're here. And it's likely that you've either just started digital art and noticed that a lot of prefab programs that come with your computer are uh, a little lacking, or you're a long-time user or even a short-time user of a program like Photoshop and your wallet is currently crying because of the price of it. Uh, regardless, the independent creators of the internet have obviously offered a, a wide array of these sort of of these free art programs a lot of them are open source a lot of them are heavily backed by their communities but if you have a tendency to get caught up in one thing if you're afraid of change or just terrified by the concept of your own autonomy like i am then let's all get out of our comfort zones and look into some of the programs that the internet has to offer now these were all of the ones that i could find um, based off of some criteria that i put down for this uh, in the case of this specific video, I'm not going to be looking into 30-day free trial programs. Free versions are going to be allowed, so if something is, say, a light, limited version, then I will be looking into that, but obviously not the pro version or whatever else, the extended version, um, that is probably worth more money. The, uh, the programs themselves must be legal and still available from the creators, so I'm not going to be looking into cracks or even abandoned wear in this video. I want something that's easily accessible and, you know, won't get people in trouble with major software companies, okay? This is going to be stuff that is free, at base, and forever. With that being said, I did also create a rating system. So it's going to range from 1 to 10. And the categories uh, that I'm going to be using to define these programs are, are going to include... Uh, intuitiveness, i.e. how easy something is to use without resources, how user-friendly is the UI, things like that, just how comfortable it feels overall. You know, sometimes even aesthetic is something that <laughs> you need to t take into consideration. I mean, you're an artist, so why not, you know? Uh, next up is resources. So where intuitiveness fails, how active are creators and users in making tutorials? And how helpful are these tutorials, you know? Uh, how frequent are they? How, you know, recent are they? You know, there are some that are that have been around for years but have a completely new version and nobody's done a tutorial on that. Uh, next up is depth, which is how complicated of a job or something like that that you can achieve in the program, how far you can go, how much you can explore it um, beyond maybe digital art. And that's another thing. A lot of these... Uh, these categories are going to be ranked based off of my personal experience and my personal preferences when it comes to digital illustration, but I do believe that at least these categories could give you an idea of where something might lie in your interests. Like, if something has, say, low intuitiveness but high depth, you'd also want it to have high resources so that you could actually learn how to use it. Stuff like that. Alright, the first program that we're going to be looking into here is going to be Krita. The Krita Foundation is actually a Norway-based company or Norway-based uh, organization, um, and uh, I think that Krita means chalk in uh, in Norwegian. Um, I think it might also mean crayon, but I'm not sure if that double meaning tra only translates in Swedish. Krita is initially basically uh, touts itself as being designed for digital art, whereas other programs might be designed for photo editing or just any other type of image manipulation. Krita is basically downright with the illustration. Uh, when it comes to intuitiveness, I would give Krita about an 8. Now, I might be a little biased in this situation because Krita was actually the last program that I used before I switched over to Clip Studio Paint. It's still regularly on my computer, uh, and I use it from time to time. Um, but I do think that in the couple of years that it's been since I've really picked it up and tried to make a full illustration on it, a lot of the luster has kind of gone away. It's one of those programs where if you're using the wand tool or something like that and you just have one pixel out of place on your line work, it's going to it's gonna overflow into the whole line work and make a whole big mess for it and you're just looking through the whole of the line work and like trying to find something. So the selection tools can be a little finicky. Um, the pop-ups on the UI can get a little, uh, a little hard to actually get access to. You kind of need to hover over them without being about to click them. I found some issues with this with my pen and it's just a little annoying. Other than that, those are mainly just kind of nitpicks. I think that this is a very intuitive and user-friendly program. 
I, I think I found it that way right when I started using it, honestly. And it might be just the fact that it was the prettiest program that I had seen since then. I think that it was uh, the first instance that introduced me to like a dark mode. And I've used that obviously in a lot of things that I've done uh, that I've used app-wise ever, ever since. And it drove a lot of the same uh, sort of programs to do similar things, I think. Maybe not Krita, but just the existence of dark mode. It does also start with some basic widgets, so it kind of it kind of starts with what you might need initially, and then you can add on or take away what you want. When it comes to resources, I would give Krita a 10. The thing is, is that this community is probably the most active of any of the, the programs that I'm talking about here. It's got a lot of recent updates and stuff like that, and every single time there's an update it looks like there is a new video from some sort of creator that regularly uses it shows off what they're doing it's insane and great um so yeah i would say that their resources um, which are also involved in their website they have tutorials they have brushes they have all these types of things available um, at your need they do free classes or paid classes or any number of like, there was this whole course someone did about, like, making, making, like, puppet-based animation game sprites, basically, you know? And so, I think that, I think that Krita definitely deserves a pretty high ranking when it comes to resources. It is a, an open source program, so I think that there's a lot of people that are very passionate about it, kind of working on it over time. When it comes to depth, though this is still a high score, I would say it's probably one of the lower scores in this list, I'm going to give Creed about a 7. It's very specified, so it's not necessarily that, that, that it's a bad thing, it's just that it's designed for digital art. So if you wanted something that could be like the end-all be-all for photo editing, I don't think that it has like a liquify tool or any like super duper um, transformation tools or anything like that that you might be looking for. Uh, but at the same time, it does still have some good extensions for playing around with like values and stuff like that. So I, I wouldn't totally nix it, but at the same time, it's probably better to just draw with than any. Oh, and it does also have an animation program. That is mainly based off of traditional style animation, uh, but I have seen a lot going into it. So that's something to consider. Next up, we have GIMP, which stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program in which GNU stands for GNU not Unity, in which GNU stands for GNU not Unity, in which GNU stands for <laughs> moving on. Uh, GIMP was created back as early as 1996, so mid 90s. This thing is older than me. And uh, it looks like it was created with possibly for the coding platform New, which is an open source coding platform um, that created actually a lot of the basis for uh, open source programs on the internet, making sure that nobody kind of stole something and then sued someone else for <laughs> freely distributing this IP. Uh, it's actually really interesting to look into, but you know, I'm a nerd, so. <laughs> um, that being said, I did have to immediately start using GIMP uh, with an issue with my pen pressure. So when I went in, because I use a graphics tablet, I wound up having to go up to uh, find a tutorial and go up to, to input method settings or something like that. Uh, set my pen, my tablet pen to screen so that I could finally get that sweet, sweet pen pressure that I crave from my, from my screen tab. So yeah, at that, I would give intuitiveness for it about a seven. This program can get a little complicated. It's definitely not as complicated as I remember it being. I did also use GIMP for a short period of time and I did not find it very user friendly, but I was also like, 15 so <laughs> it is made like I said more with photo editing in mind like Photoshop so it it's not necessarily as plug-and-play for illustration as something like Krita. Having said it does kind of look weirdly pretty there was something about it that was just so crisp so neat about like the, the the drawings themselves I found it really nice to look at. When it comes to resources I would give it an 8. Uh, I think that if it, I were a photographer I would probably give this a 10. The thing is, is that I'm talking about illustration here, and GIMP is definitely not mainly made for illustration. But there are books on this. <laughs> Whole books. Like how there are textbooks on how to use Photoshop, there are probably longer textbooks on how to use GIMP. It is insane the number of resources. Of course, 
Also, because it's so old, I think that a lot of the, the, the bulk of resources is probably outdated by this point. Even the forum that I went to to try and troubleshoot my pen pressure problem <laughs> was already out of date. It already had the wrong, the wrong navigation to the right folder to do something in. So that's crazy. And it was probably just a couple months ago. That's the thing is it's updating so frequently, but you know, that's nobody's fault. It's just that sometimes information takes a while to get out there. That being said, I would give depth a 10, just a solid 10. Looking into this thing, uh, you can code in uh, streamlines to your editing process. If you're editing photos, you can obviously go pretty, pretty dang far into editing photos. Um, there are books surrounding it, and it has been around for a while. And beyond that, I would say that there are a lot of probably um, plugins or edits or something like that to GIMP, similar to like programs like Blender, that have just been around and accessible for so long that people just kind of pile everything onto it until you get something that's completely different from the original and then they make a new thing. But regardless, it's still started there, you know? <laughs> This thing is probably the basis for a lot of programs. Oh, it does also have layer-based animation. All right, then we have Fire Alpaca. Now, I just want to take a moment to appreciate the fact that there is a serious art app that we can very seriously understand called Fire Alpaca. I love the future. A Fire Alpaca is a another open source program. It looks like it's available in up to 10 languages, and I just love their freaking little llama character, or the little al alpaca character, he's so cute. Yeah, the program itself it kind of totes itself as being very, fairly simple, lightweight, so apparently it works on even uh, old computers, it works fairly fast, and like kind of, again, infinitely customizable or infinitely fairly simple. When it comes to intuitiveness, I would give Fire Alpaca about a 7. It's pretty simple to pick up, and uh, have you ever been slapped in the face with a memory? Because when I opened this, I did actually have this giant flashback about eight years to when I was using uh, an early, possibly cracked version of Paint Tool Sci. That is crazy to me. The, 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 physical, the physical nature of it, I don't know if it's the aesthetic, the way the tools are set up, just kind of everything vaguely reminds me of Paint Tool Sci, which is a one-time uh, one paid art program. The, the thing is, is that I remember having issues finding the tool options. So, when it came to things like the, the paint bucket, I wasn't sure whether or not it actually offered something other than recognizing every single layer. And I actually had to look it up when I guess I could have just looked up. Uh, the bar is at the top of the program and it's very tiny and there's not a lot to it when it comes to the tool options. So there are a couple of good tools and obviously a lot good for like guidelines and all that but they're a little bare compared to the other programs that I've looked into today, like Krita and Gimp. It's definitely a beginner's tool, and that being said, I would give resources about a 9, because there are a lot of early tutorials and things like that. It's very common, it looks like, at least among starting artists, if you have a, you know, a low-capacity computer, if you have something that, you know, you just, you just want to get into and draw. It's very, it's very simple, and it's very friendly, I think one of the things that the llama, or the, I keep saying it's a llama, it's fire alpaca. The alpaca says on the website is we are all friend. And I think that's true. It's a very friendly program. And I, there's a lot of just starting out artists uh, making tutorials on it, how to use it. Uh, basically, there is also, it seems like a small animation community around it because it also has animation capabilities. It does also have a program, uh, two programs actually, up in the upper right hand corner here uh, that you can see. The little alpaca is Alpaca Get, which is basically a web based platform where you can temporarily upload like high quality PNGs and it won't like crush them to death if you then want to like put them over on your phone and upload them to something like Instagram. Uh, it also has the social media drawing, the drawing social media Pixiv connected to it. So you can basically post right from Fire Alpaca to this community that seems to offer a lot of drawing challenges and maybe then like d connect it directly to something like your Twitter. So that's pretty interesting too. And I would say that that community is probably um, very adept with, uh, with tutorials and like, I only looked around it for a few minutes. Uh, now depth, I would give about a six. 
It's not a very in-depth program. It doesn't really, you know, advertise itself as one. I don't think that this is necessarily a bad thing. It's just straightforward, you know? It has that animation capability and the, the bare tool options and stuff like that. So it, it has some... You draw with it, you know? <laughs> so I think that that's, that that's perfectly fine. And what, like what it said, when it, the, with it being lightweight, I guess you wouldn't expect a whole lot of, like, crossover between capabilities for it, you know? Um, so, yeah, it's like, what, do you want a big program that'll take up all of your computer space, or do you want a relatively small program that you can do exactly what you want to do with? And I think that that's pretty cool. Next up, we have My Paint. My Paint is different. Like, seriously, it starts out so much more different than any of the other programs in this. Like, you, you saw the other three that I mentioned here already. Like, even though they have kind of different aesthetics, a lot of these programs start out about the same way, right? With the layers in one corner and the, the paint options, you know, the little color wheel up in the other corner. And My Paint doesn't really do that. It's, uh, it's got an infinite canvas, which is very interesting, and, uh, it seems it's another open source program, but it, it seems just weird. And, uh, starting off, I'd probably give intuitiveness about a six. Like, it's pretty simple to just get it, get in there and doodle around, so, I don't know, depending on how you, you would want to do that, I, it might depend, but you would have to click around to basically get the, the, the setup that needs to uh, or that that is there in other programs. So that's kind of interesting. And if you're looking into a paint program as something that can provide layer-based stuff, then it does do that, but it doesn't really seem to have that be too forward. The thing is, is that I think that this program is actually kind of made for what it says, which is painting in a traditional style in a digital space. And it kind of touts itself at like that on its website. That being said, a lot of the brush engines and variations are very nice. I noticed as well that there are not uh, any like selection tools or gradient tools. So while I was doing a lot of these programs, what I would do is I would uh, I would make a sketch, and a lot of the time I need to do this anyway. But I'd almost make sure that I'd have something that I could maybe lasso or something like that, or or take a selection tool over and see if I could transform it. That was kind of one of my experiments because I personally do that a lot in these types of programs. And there were not any selection tools that I could see. It's like you can you can move around stuff to your heart's content and stuff like that. I don't know if you can actually transform it. I don't think that you can. Uh, there also aren't any gradient tools. So uh, if you were to select something and then pull pull want to pull a gradient through it, you couldn't do that. However, the blending on the program is probably one of the better ones that I've seen. Like I don't know, maybe if I were to try and uh, redeem myself on my Bob Ross challenge, I would go for this program. So probably not, but it is really interesting. Uh, resources, I would give about a five. This is already kind of a low scoring program for me. It's not that it's bad. I just don't know if it's necessarily for me. Um, for one, the website and the forums on said website seem a little old fashioned. Like, even though the program has been updated since uh, up into 2020, uh, a lot of the website seems kind of, like, unkempt. I don't know, the current version definitely seems a lot different than some of the other ones that have been showing up. Or maybe that was just because people also pulled up all those layer customizations and stuff like that. But initially it seemed like it was pretty similar to any of these other open source programs and then kind of deviated from that. Which again is still interesting and wanted to make itself look unique. But I, I don't know how well it fared for it in terms of, like, what digital artists usually do, I would say. I mean, I don't know. There's some people that obviously do digital painting, like actual painting, uh, that might like this tool. But otherwise, I think that a lot of people kind of opt for digital illustration. Oh, yeah, and there's also... The, so the canvas is infinite, and you have to go in and click and drag this little frame, uh, basically to kind of crop it out if you wanted to export something. And there's no pixel sizing, again, that I could see... For the brushes in the program so you could probably kind of infer based off of how big you made your canvas but like 
you still can't, like, you still can't figure out how big or small something is on your brushes because it's just kind of a slider with no numbers. So that's, that's kind of weird. And then, yeah, the community surrounding it, again, going back to resources, is, uh, it's a little sparse. It's a little bit much like, oh, look at this program. Look, you want to paint around in it? It's like actual paint. Hey, look at that, you know? It's, it's not a lot. And it's weird. Uh, depth, I would also give about a six. Like I said, it's kind of aimed more toward more traditional methods. Uh, and that's definitely really cool. It's not what I'm used to. It's pretty straightforward, and a, but a little bare. The tool options are nice. Um, I would say that they're they're more the the options themselves are more in depth than fire alpacas, but there are fewer tools than fire alpaca, so it kind of evens itself out. Uh, the the shape and vector tools are pretty cool. Like you can adjust them pretty freely, and then the brush engines are really cool. Again, it does kind of push. Uh, I think on the website even. Uh, it's kind of digital style brushes as more experimental brushes on the program. So it really is just maybe if you're younger or older and you really just kind of want to get in, uh, pick your colors and paint and use few to no layers, then I think that this program is great. It's just not really for me. All right, for our last full review here, we have Medibang. So Medibang is a uh, Japanese-based mainly program that seems to be available on multiple platforms. It's our only uh, not fully open source program available on this list today. It's uh, It's got a premium version that you can pay for to remove ads or um, you can purchase uh, brushes and stuff like that through it, which, you know, and, and other programs, individual creators will usually sell brushes on Gumroad and stuff like that. but. In this case, I think there are actually like packs of brushes that just don't come with the program. It's it's a bit like Fire Alpaca and Clip Studio Paint had a baby. It's very manga centric, which is very similar to Clip, and it's got very similar setups to Fire Alpaca. Actually, it's like somebody just took Fire Alpaca, put it into dark mode, and gave it more tool options. Like even the tool options bar on the top is like the same in the same orientation as Fire Alpaca, which I think is funny. There are some ads on Startup, and majority of them just seem to be for brushes or tutorials or manga anyway, so, you know, that's neither here nor there. It is a little loud on Startup. It has a similar Startup window to something like Clip Studio Paint, which when you open it up, so there's a window that you that, you, that pops up first, and it'll be like, oh, what kind of illustration do you want to make? And you click on that, and then you open up your program from there. It has some pretty, pretty interesting like, snapping tools and comic making tools. Basically, it's really good for making shapes and straight lines for stuff like comics and it is available on multiple devices with what it looks like to be cloud storage that might be limited depending on whether or not you have the premium version and i don't know maybe the app versions have more ads probably along the bottom of the screen or something uh <clears throat> usually when something has ads they don't tend to show up on desktop so i'm not totally sure how it might look on a phone and uh, I don't have an up-to-date enough phone, nor draw my phone enough to give a decent, uh, a decent exposure to <laughs> Metabang on, like, say, an Android device or an iPad, if it's available on iPad. The intuitive sniff score that I would give it is about an 8. Uh, now, when it comes to resources, I would actually give it about a 7, so just kind of one below intuitiveness. Um, it is created mainly for Conga- Congus? It is created mainly for comics and manga, uh, so the, so a lot of the resources provided to it are for comics. So if you're really into that type of style, I think that this could be an interesting step into going uh, going into that if you if you just really want to draw manga. And it is fairly similar to something like Clip Studio Paint, which is a one purchase but paid program. Uh, so I would say that that's pretty that's pretty handy. It kind of gives you an idea unlimitedly for what you could be doing with Clip because Clip has a th has a 30-day trial. There is a community centering around it. There's a there's a social media similar again to Fire Alpaca's Pixiv um, that does that does tutorials and uh, competitions called Art Street. The only thing is is that it's mainly in Japanese. Like the first default Art Street profile that they have you follow is 
all in Japanese. It posts in Japanese, and there are even a couple of English users on there that are like, I don't know the language. And you know, sometimes things don't always translate true, and it's hard to communicate with people that don't speak your language, regardless of how capable some translation tools have gotten. It does also have uh, a large a large amount of manga resources. It looks like it has another program available that is more and even more manga centric called Jump Paint with tutorials from, I assume, Shonen Jump authors. So basically kind of translating your sketches maybe into digital form, doing the things that manga mangakas do these days with digital access and stuff like that. So that might be something to look into. Like I said, if you're really into manga, maybe if you're a bit of a weeb and you know how to read Japanese, or if you are Japanese, uh, but for an American like me, it's a little, it's a little daunting. Uh, when it comes to depth, I would also give it a seven. Like I said, it's mainly based around manga and comics, so that you know that specificity kind of narrows things down a little bit. Uh, it is, it does have a decent range of tools available in the, I guess, light version. And I don't know, maybe there are sales or even free versions of certain tools, you know, you never know. I'm not sure if this is a function of the premium version or not, but it seems, again, similar to Clip Studio Paint, available able to create ebooks. And what's interesting is that because of its social media and all this type of stuff and like the main screen that can take you to Art Street, Art Street itself acts as a social media and a marketplace for a lot of these indie manga. So, I don't know, if you're ever interested in buying some indie manga, I guess you could also go up to Art Street. Overall, it's pretty interesting. <sighs> Browser-based photo editing programs. So, my initial source for this is mainly X Daniel Art's Photoshop alternative list. Now, these programs that I looked into were listed under photo editing and not painting uh, like some of the other programs that you see here, but they were also up there with GIMP and they had paint in the name. So I thought, or at least one of them did, um, and the other ones turned out to not be totally free. So I kind of skipped over them, but they, they had paint in the name and I was interested in the idea of maybe they might be capable of handling illustration in a browser based program. And I thought that that'd be interesting to add to this video because you know, maybe on the rare chance that you can't download something onto your computer or maybe you don't know how, which is a pretty simple ask, but you know, you do you. They're just, they're too slow for me. Already, um, I'm not expecting pen pressure and I don't get it for either of these programs that I looked into, which were Sumo Paint and Pixlr. Sumo Paint was a nightmare. Sumo Paint, I, I could barely get to, to run, and at one point I accidentally opened a new page to try and get my reference in on the program because there was no way to easily import something, and it closed my other drawing, and I was just like, nope, nope, mm -mm. I'm done, I give up. But I was able to get at least something out of Pixlr. Although it does have a few of the same speed and motion issues as Sumo Paint, it doesn't have pen pressure, but it is slightly more forgiving and it does have the ability to export outside programs. I would not recommend either of them, but if I had to recommend one, it would be Pixlr. <laughs> because Pixlr was nice to me, but I, I just don't think that it's there for browser-based programs, man. And Sumo Paint actually touted itself as a, or as a, um, as a flash based program, which if you know anything about the internet, um, Flash is on its way out or possibly already dead. So honestly, I don't even know how I got it to work, but here we are. And there is a premium version for both. And at this point, I'm wondering whether or not you need to download them because I, I can't imagine, like, even as a photo editor, you know, my mom edits pictures and like, I, I could imagine her being frustrated with something like this, maybe for something quick, but you still need that maneuverability of the mouse and stuff like that for when you're editing a picture. It's still frustrating if something is slow. So I don't really know who they're for, but they exist. They're there. No scores for them. They don't deserve it. I'm so glad this recording is almost done. I actually um, recorded this all before and then lost it. So uh, here we are. 
at the end of the video. And I've done this twice. Actually more than that because I usually have to do multiple takes, so yay! I do like this version better though. I think it's a bit more cohesive, so I'll keep it. Um, that was about it though for all of these uh, browser program or for all of these art programs. So let me know what you thought about it. Sincerely, uh, let me know if I missed anything in regards to my initial rules on this video, or uh, if I should do other videos on things like the 30-day trial-based programs. I, I don't think I could ever do like one purchase-based programs, however few there might be. Um, I don't think my wallet could take it right now. But I, <laughs> beside that, um, yeah. This video was a lot of fun. It was a little bit of research and uh, a lot of drawing, a little bit of frustration. And, you know, I like all of those things. It was a big, big project for me. So I hope you like it. So yeah, let me know if there's anything that you would like, what anything else that you would like me to do. And uh, until then, I will see y'all next time.